Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Go proverb, sacrifice two stones. Or you could say, add a second stone and sacrifice both. And this is something that people do towards the edge of the board most of the time. So this is a, an example of that position where black wants to extend this one stone to two stones. So the black stone that is being captured is this one. It already cannot escape. It's a position where black does have some forcing moves. But if black plays on this side, for instance, white will capture, and that's it. Black has no more forcing moves. So black only got one stone on the outside in return for sacrificing that one stone. Otherwise, if black plays an Atari from this side, white will capture anyway. And again, black's next move, for instance, at 018, it's not necessarily forcing. So black got only one forcing move there and still seems to have a rather imperfect shape on the left. So this is an example of how black can extend once towards the second line and sacrifice two stones. So the logic of what this move is doing is that it's, it's adding liberties to the dead black group, which is the two, these two stones now. And when white chases it, black cannot escape. But since black has two liberties now, black can play forcing moves from both sides. So black can play here, forcing white to connect, and then black can play on this side. Getting forcing moves. Actually, three forcing moves. The three triangles are the three forcing moves that black got, and black got some influence towards the rest of the board. Going back to the starting position, one of the characteristics of the proverb when it actually works is that it's usually towards the edge of the board, because capturing stones towards the edge of the board is not as effective as capturing stones in the middle of the board. When you capture stones in the middle of the board, that's going to affect, that's going to create a strong position that affects a lot of the area in the middle of the board, whereas it's more limited towards the edge. So the edge of the board is a good place to be sacrificing stones in general. And so that's how this move is working. So if you want to sacrifice two stones and get a lot of forcing moves, quite often you will find that move somewhere on the second line or relatively close to the edge of the board. Okay, let's look at a different example. In this case, it's the marked black stone that is being captured, and it cannot cannot escape. So if black realizes that it cannot escape, uh, maybe black will be thinking of playing some forcing moves now. And again, this is a case where black should extend to two stones first. So to start with, uh, let's make the mistakes first. If black plays here, that's an Atari against the white stone at Q17 and white will answer by capturing the black stone. And that's it, black has run out of forcing moves. Or black can play on this side, and white captures the one stone again. And black probably has to add a stone to that. And again, black didn't get as much as black could have out of that captured stone in the corner. So to go to black's correct sequence, black will extend once. Again, this move extends black's liberties. Black cannot escape but black does have time to play this forcing move first and then can play two forcing moves from this side. In the process of white capturing those two stones, black got three stones here. So it was this stone and this stone and the target, final target here. So black had three forcing moves that were gained by extending to two stones, where if black had not extended to two stones, it would only have been one of these three. And so finally, black's going to connect here. So we could compare this position with uh, one of the previous positions I showed you where black did not extend to two stones. So that's this one. It looks fairly similar on the right side, but black's missing a stone at P17. So black's missing this stone here in this other variation. So that's how black got an extra forcing move by extending to two stones. So up to here, I've shown you two examples of extending from a stone on the third line down to the second line. And that is a very common case of this proverb in actual play. Also, there are some cases where you start with a stone on the second line and you can crawl underneath to, ex to extend its loons. So this is an example where, for instance, if black just connects here, white can capture the one stone like this and black has run out of forcing moves. So again, black is going to gain something by extending the liberties here once. White pushes through. In this case, black's going to play all of the forcing moves 
against these three white stones. So it's a uh, race to capture, which black is going to lose by one move, but black is going to get some forcing moves from outside in the process. So in this case, black has played three stones on the outside. So it's this stone, this stone, and this stone that black got in the process of sacrificing two stones. So finally, black will probably want to protect the cut. This is a knight's connection. Um, a, a solid connection would work well. So the idea is that black got those three marked stones in the process of sacrificing two stones. So that was my video about sacrificing two stones, or you could say add a second stone to sacrifice both. Thank you for watching, and please sign up to my channel for more videos like this.